After a month and over 150 plus hours of actual print time on the Elgu Neptune 4 Plus, what do I think about it? Have I liked it? Have I had the same issues as everyone else? Is this the same print head as the one it came with? Well, I'll tell you all that, but first, I'm Ed, and welcome to my Tech Talk. One of the first prints I started with is the classic Benchy. One, because it kind of tells you a little bit about the printer on all the aspects of it, overhangs, bridging, all that kind of stuff. And I threw a third one in there from my old Ender 3 that I recently put to Clipper 3, or Clipper 3 to Clipper. So it's not running Marlin anymore, so it's running a whole new profile plus higher speed. So that one is in its own ballpark just to throw in there. But this gray one I did at first, this is the 18 minute G-code Benchy that Elgu includes on the little red thumb drive they give you. So at first glance, you can tell that it's a Benchy. But if you look closer on the front of it, on the sides, definitely tells like it's under extruded, like it was going too fast, not pushing enough, not having enough flow meters per square cube, whatever it is. But I mean, overall, it's not that bad, especially as it gets higher past this mass. I mean, it does look pretty good. Even the bridging underneath. I mean, a lot better than I thought it was gonna be. I was watching that one for a while because when I see an 18 minute Benchy, I think, oh, this is gonna be a mess. I don't want to get that blob of death initially. So it printed it. Next, we'll look at my Ender 3 one. Now this one, I thought it was actually gonna be a lot better. So this tells me that I need to calibrate that printer if I want to keep using that, especially with its speeds and all that being on Clipper now. But the one we want to pay attention to is obviously the Benchy that came off, the Algoo 4 Plus. Overall, the Benchy came out great. Not many imperfections, I would say. Obviously, it's in the front, we have that little mess up. I don't want to say cooling because I did run the auxiliary fan for about majority of the prints. And part of me does want to remove it just because I honestly don't see much of a difference from print to print with it, but it's there for now still. But other than probably where I messed up and the same for the chimney, I mean, it looks great too. I mean, it's definitely a real competitor to the 18 minute one. Maybe I can do some tweaking and stuff to get that a little closer to that 18 minute Benji and make it look better. Next, I went with one of my favorites, the Flexorax. And because we have the massive printer, I had to go big at 350%, I think this was, the Flexorex. So I had no issues printing this. It printed and went. As soon as I popped it off, it was you know, ready to go. So this is gonna be a fun toy for my daughter. I did make it a little stronger, so you know, I'm sure she's gonna throw this and hopefully it survives those throws for a little bit. I don't expect it to survive long, but maybe a little bit. And then to compare, this is the normal one. I mean, basically the size of the foot compared to the whole thing. So with a massive printer, you can do some awesome massive prints. I mean, it's came out fantastic. No issues besides, I would say maybe I need to do more uh, top layers or something, but still, no issues so far. Then as I'm browsing printables, I came across the Gridfinity Honeycomb Wall Pattern. So this is probably gonna be printed on this machine for a while as I wanna add this to the background here because I feel like that's gonna be a cool, you know, another detail plus with all the different hooks and brackets and all the different mounting things you can do with this. You know, I can add more stuff to the wall. Plus, hexagons are the best of guns. And as you can tell, I've printed quite a bit of them and they're not gonna stop probably anytime soon. And the, but like I said, as the best part, you can print the larger size ones so you can cover more area and therefore technically print less if you can print bigger and more of them. Another one I found on printables are those cool uh, lightsabers and swords that you can print that are, uh, they call it the retractable. So I found a lightsaber and the hilt came out beautiful. I mean, with no supports needed or anything like that, I mean, it's nearly flawless. But the moment of the truth is that it does retract, but I got one that did stick. And I tried squeezing it, tried 
pulling it too. Sadly, I cannot get it out. So kind of a fail-ish, but not 100%. I would still say this thing is a good 80% good full complete print. I mean, even then you're not gonna have the lightsaber out all the time because most likely that's when it's gonna break. So as a good, you know, prop piece, you can just kind of stick it somewhere. I mean, that still looks cool. And like I said, the hilt itself came out beautiful. I really loved this one. Then I was inspired by Jinxy, the popular Twitch streamer. Hey Alexa, how do you say purple in English? Plus the recent Rainbow Six Siege tournament that happened. And I found not only, but printed Sludge's hammer. I found the 3D model online. I was able to just throw that in a blender to cut it up a little bit so that I could actually print majority of the pieces just in one. So I had to do less gluing, less joints and stuff like that. I did print the head. I did cut it. So that way I printed it up because it's kind of got like that meat hammer type studs on it. So I didn't print it like this. I felt like it might've messed it up. So that was a me decision in a sense. But man, this thing is fun to just kind of hold and swing around. Obviously you're not hitting anything with it, but still. One of these cool things you can just print, hold, mess around with. Obviously if you break it, you can print a new one or just glue it back together if it's gluable. But I mean, these props are just so fun to play with. And if you saw my YouTube short, you already saw our little dummy 13 reprinted. This one was a fun one to print because it came as a runner with the body and the armor being separate. So you built it like one of those old school models back in the day. So this was super fun to print, especially since I was able to scale it up to 250%. So instead of being, you know, like this tall, he's this tall, he's huge. I mean, and everything came out working. It was a little tight because both armor and the uh, body were printed at 250. I think that was my fault. I think you're supposed to put the armor at like 249.5, I believe, if you're doing it like that type of scaling. So some parts I did have to squeeze in, but no standing, trimming, nothing like that. And you'll probably see this guy hanging around the background. Maybe I'll change him up, throw have some fun with him. You spot him, throw him in the comments. And then I thought, well, Dummy 13 can't be lonely. He's gotta have a friend too. So we printed him the Lego Man. Now this one I found on Thingiverse, I believe it was. And I'll try to put all these in the description below or where I found them all so they get the right attributes and stuff like that. Um, obviously none of these are made by me. I'm gonna disclaim that right now. These are all found and were for free on either Printables or Thingiverse. So I just wanna shout everyone out that made these. They're awesome. But this Lego man, um, I don't know if I did settings wrong or stuff like that because, well, his head is very loose. I'm not sure if it's supposed to be. The body, and this might be because I printed it like this, I remember, or something like that. I don't remember what I did, but body doesn't really fit on right. And if I push it down, I think, yeah, I cracked it a little bit right there. But I mean, legs move. The arms are a little, no, that arm's definitely stiff. The hands don't fit. But, I mean, is a standing figure? He works. It was definitely maybe more settings tweaking. Maybe it was more because I oriented the parts a little bit different. But I want to say that's not even scaled up anything. I think the model itself is a five to one from the original size one. So that is just a scaled up the model is a person made. But like I said, now Dummy 13 has a new buddy. Cause I think I'm probably gonna print more of these. I saw a Deadpool one and definitely might get some red to get a Deadpool guy. And then as I'm printing a lot of these, definitely had some scraps and tree supports and stuff like that. I said, well, I need somewhere to put all this. Why not make somewhere to put it all? So I printed this big vase thing well, more of a bucket, ran it in vase mode. And obviously when you run it in vase mode, you get really thin walls, which I was not aware of. So when I went to go pick it up, I cracked it in a couple places. So it was definitely a me thing. And other than that, I mean, it came out great. Uh, in vase mode, you can still see, I, I don't know if there's seams or 
what this little, I mean, I would say it's a seam because it's a pattern on the whole thing. And I wanna say that's the only spot, but I thought in vase mode, you know, there's no seam because it's a continuous swirl the whole time. But maybe I'm mistaken or maybe I had a wrong setting, but that would say, I would say that's the only defect flaw on this thing that I didn't do besides cracking it in a couple places. But once again, it's just holding scraps, so it's not that big of a deal. And I thought for the next one, maybe we need to do some prints that are more established, that definitely are free that everyone can print, and something that's probably difficult that we can do if we get more printers to test and stuff like that. So I found something cool, neat, and kind of a piece of art, the Eiffel Tower. As you can see, it looks great. I mean, there's some flaws in it, and I'll point them out here in a second, but I was extremely surprised this thing even worked. I was really worried that because there are so many Z hops in here that at one point it might just knock itself over or something like that. I believe this was close to a 20 hour print. So I started it at night. You know, obviously during the night you really can't check on it, but obviously I had a camera hooked up to this. So I was able to check it periodically if I woke up. And then during the day, I had my girlfriend make sure this thing wasn't causing any issues or like I said, the blob of death. Really worried about that with this machine because so many people complain about it. But I mean, it came out great, fantastic. Obviously, like I said, the flaws is this little stringy popped out. Um, some bridging issues right underneath the main tower of the whole thing, but other than that, oh yeah, that's right. I had, I think, like I said, it ran into itself a little bit right here in one of the legs. Looks like it popped, it made itself pop out, but it fixed itself on the way up. And other than that, I mean, it's beautiful. Like I said, these are gonna probably be art pieces that probably just give away. So this one might go, if my girlfriend doesn't want it, might give it to my niece so she can put it in her room. Oh, and as a bonus, I forgot about this one. I printed a new stand, even for my uh, ROG Ally. I mean, it looks great. Obviously it does its job and it's a lot sturdier than the one you get when you buy an ROG Ally. So, I mean, it's just nice that you can print all these nice big things because I remember this did not fit on my Ender 3, so not something I could print on that, sadly. Now as for issues, I've barely had any, honestly, and I'm happy to report that. No blob to death. This still is the original print HUD, thankfully. I have no issues on that, maybe because I'm using good actual filament, no generic stuff off Amazon, but it's the known names that are probably the ones that are gonna hurt the print head and stuff like that because they're gonna have so much braces and stuff like that. So if you're gonna buy fancy colors and stuff like that, I would probably recommend going with like name brand filament companies, not ones that don't have a name or anything like that. So that's my rec recommendation with maybe the blob of death. I don't know what, what's been causing everyone's issue with it. I haven't had any major catastrophes with mine. <laughs> my only issue is I over tightened the belts on the, the Y axis. So even then, I just had to order new belts off Amazon and the clips and you know, she's up and running, like no complaints. Oop, sorry, buddy. But even then, Elgu is still sending out a new belt because I asked them and they said it could have been us, it could have been me, but they're still kind enough to send one out for me. So an A plus for Elgu on that one. There was no need. I was just curious if it was a known issue, if it was my fault, but they're still kind enough to do so. And other than that, honestly, for prints, I think I'm sh I showed off everything I've done. I've had no complaints overall on the printer. I mean, like I said, when I did the unboxing, we do have the latest firmware, so maybe that was a huge plus. We didn't have to deal with any of the Z uh, height issues that were known in previous uh, UI firmware issues. But overall, I'm loving this thing that we went out and got some parts. So stay tuned because this machine is going to be railed out soon. <laughs> That was such a bad joke. But stay tuned. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment. And thanks for watching.